All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, on behalf of Chief Bailey, who is not able to be here with us today, my name is Kendall Adams, and I have the privilege of serving as Deputy Chief of the Criminal Investigations Division. I want to start by acknowledging the reason we are here today, Carmen Van Hus. She's our why, and the reason her family, friends, loved ones, and IMPD never stopped looking for answers. Because 31 years ago, she was tragically killed. And today, we finally have some answers. Andrea and Jimmy, I won't pretend to know what you are feeling today. But I do hope this is the first step in providing what closure the criminal justice system can. I want to be clear. I'm not going to say the suspect's name who was arrested. You will find that in the PC in the press release, because today isn't about him. It's about Carmen and the 19 years she lived in this world. Today's arrest demonstrates the commitment of our unsolved homicide unit investigators, Mike Condon, Charles Benner, and Sergeant Leslie Van Buskirk. Marion County Prosecutor's Office, DPA Amy Jacobson, and Prosecutor Ryan Mears. The Marion County Forensic Service Agency, commonly referred to as the lab. The Fusion Center in the Indiana State Police, CODIS Administrator Christine Crouch, to bring justice to families and victims no, no matter how much time has passed. It demonstrates the power of science, perseverance, and never-ending pursuit of the truth. It also highlights the key role that IMPD un Unsolved Homicide Unit plays in seeking the truth and never giving up. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Captain Bill Carter and Analyst Mira Patel for their commitment and dedication in this case. Captain Carter oversees our commercial crimes branch and has a tenacious appetite for complex cases. And Mira, an analyst in our Office of Corporation Counsel assigned to our Nuisance Abatement Task Force. Captain Carter's dedication and commitment to Carmen and her family are commendable. Today would not have been possible without their tireless effort. To you both, I say thank you. Through the use of geneal uh, gen genetic genealogy, advanced analytic capabilities, and D DNA comparison, detectives were able to develop new leads in the case, which ultimately led to us, uh, the suspect, now being in custody. We wouldn't be here today if it weren't for them. Also, thank you to the authorities in Boone County, Missouri, who coordinate with our detectives to surveil the suspect covertly and eventually take him into custody. With that, I will turn it over to Prosecutor Ryan Mears, a valuable partner in our criminal justice efforts. Thank you, Chief. Mears. My name is Ryan Mears, and I'm the Marion County Prosecutor, and anytime you see a case like this, you immediately think of Carmen and Carmen's family and what they've had to deal with over the course of the last 30 years, understanding that they are still grieving the loss of their family member, of their loved one, while the person who we are alleging is ultimately responsible for these acts is walking around and enjoying their freedom. And so today is a, a day that uh, we're very grateful to be in a position to announce the charges. Uh, in this case, we have filed three separate charges. The first charge is murder. It is a knowing murder, uh, meaning that uh, the defendant knowingly killed another person. The second charge is a felony murder charge, meaning that a felony took place during the course of the murder. And the third charge is rape. Uh, which is a Class A felony. I, I think it's important to recognize that all of these charges are under the old code, meaning that the range of penalties are different. So for murder, it's 45 to 65 years, and for the A felonies, uh, it is 20 to 50 years. Uh, and certainly some of those charges can be run consecutive to one another. A uh, couple of notes or, or thoughts about the investigation. I think it's uh, important really just, just to recognize how hard everybody worked to put us in this position. Uh, I have to give a tremendous shout out to our friends at uh, the crime lab in the coroner's office for everything that they were willing to do. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to the detectives because once you get that DNA result, it's like, okay, well, well what are we left with? How are we going to get this evidence in at trial? 
and the detectives were relentless in tracking down all of the available witnesses. And when witnesses weren't available because we couldn't find them or they passed away, the crime lab and the coroner's office stepped up, they retested things to put us in a position where we uh, feel confident we're gonna be able to get this evidence uh, admitted in a court of law. And that doesn't happen without the incredible efforts of the detective, the crime lab and the coroner's office. And so a huge debt of gratitude to everybody's willingness to work on those issues to put us in a position to not only make today's charging announcement, but also hopefully be in a position to bring justice to Carmen's family. And so with that, I'll turn it over to the family to share a couple of remarks. From the bottom of my heart, and on behalf of my dad and our entire family, I want to say thank you to Bill and Mira and every single person that had a hand in this. There's a lot of people that put in a lot of work for a lot of years, and to every single one, we're all very, very thankful. Um, there's a lot of people that miss Carmen all these years. She had a lot of family, a lot of friends. She had cousins that loved her like sisters. She had an aunt and uncle that loved her like a daughter. Um, she wasn't able to experience her college graduation or have a wedding or any of life's events that she uh, missed out on. We were coming a lot closer just as she was taken from us and for my dad to have to find his daughter after what was brutally done to her makes this day bittersweet. I wish she was here to see it. She was taken from me when I was a freshman in high school and I'm thankful that finally the man that did it is where he needs to be. I do have hope that any similar case with DNA can get this same treatment with the genealogy and the, uh, everything we have available today. I want all of them to get the same attention and get maybe we can have some more outcomes like this. I think that's it. Uh, before we open up questions, I just want to say to families that may be in similar situations, we hear you. Um, today is not a victory lap. Today is really just providing that closure for families. And I know there's so many families in our community that don't have that closure. And I encourage you to reach out to us at 327-3475. Uh, that's our homicide office where they will take that information and continue to uh, try to see uh, if they can move the case forward. Unfortunately, a lot of cases out there, uh, and a lot depends on what evidence is available, what statements are available, uh, but I don't want you to think that we've forgotten about you. We hear you, and we know today opens a wound for you, and I do want to acknowledge it. So we'll take a few questions that you may have. Technologies more and more will bring about results like we have today. I mean, so much has changed, right? It's changing all the time and making advances. I mean, is that what you're hoping for when you're giving this message to families? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's one of the things in this case is that technology has advanced. Um, our ability to compare things has advanced. Our ability uh, to seek those answers uh, continues. That pursuit continues. But um, based on technology, based on people coming forward, based on you know people giving us statements, um, can really make a difference in these cases. And our hope is that you know obviously there's not DNA in every case. <clears throat> you know that's just the reality. Um, there's not fingerprints in every case, and so we have to work through each case independently. Uh, it's not one blanket answer. DNA is the answer, right? Sometimes it's not involved in cases, and so we have to work through each case independently and really try to work it to the best of our ability. And I think, you know, even though we have a small unit, we're committed to doing that. Um, that's, that's the charge that Chief Bailey has given us, and that's the charge that I think we take very seriously here for IMPD. So for other cases that are years, if not also decades old, that have the amount of DNA that would be able to be tested in this way, is it realistic that those cases could also get the similar treatment with this genealogy testing? Yes. Uh, if there is a possibility um, with DNA and we have 
a few that are pending at the Indiana State Police um, genealogy lab. Captain Carter can talk about that, or uh, uh, Captain Spurgeon. Uh, we will, um, but obviously we have to find funding. We have to determine all those things about the probability of the case. Sometimes even when we we have those things, suspects are deceased. Uh, we just still don't have enough. Uh, sometimes it puts us in the ballpark, but not specifically on the individual. So that's why I say, yes, we're committed to it. In each case, we continue to work independently. If we can find enough evidence, then we'll, we'll seek the funding, we'll find the dollars, and we'll commit to it. So funding isn't necessarily a huge obstacle. It's just something that will need to be located. It will. I, I think we're committed to finding the, finding the appropriate dollars to do what we need to do. And, you know, I think our community uh, criminal justice partners are willing to do that with us. Thank you, everyone. Wait, I do have a question. Um, this question is actually, I don't know if Bill Carter is able to speak. I know you've worked really hard on this case. In 2015, you actually put together a GoFundMe to get a DNA test. What did it take for you to, to keep on pushing for this for this case and to, to finally have some uh, just just an outcome we wanted to <clears throat> obviously we wanted to offer a solution and just kept kept working it and technology in dna constantly evolves and so it, it was the dna test in 2015 was definitely different from this type of testing so um but no just i always i spoke to the family and just you know we wanted to keep working until we figured something out or exhausted it for all the stumbling blocks that have happened in this case, um, do you have any recommendations for for future cases, or do you think I don't know what I'm asking? Other than do you have any other recommendations for stumbling blocks? I'm bringing Captain Spurgeon up from our homicide unit. He oversees our unsolved, unsolved, unsolved. Good afternoon. Um, Yes, as far as uh, technology is concerned, uh, that's one of the things that we're uh, trying to take advantage of because, uh, as was mentioned. Uh, Technology, especially in the in the realm of uh, DNA uh, biology, serology, it uh, it changes all the time. Uh, so uh, things that uh, uh, were tested years and years ago under that technology that was current at the time uh, may well uh, give different results uh, with uh, advanced testing that we have now. And so we're looking at uh, those cases that um, are able to be tested like that, uh, and and hopefully we'll get the same results. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it.